Good morning, and welcome to Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ online worship service. On behalf of our pastor, the Bishop S. E. Igerhart, we welcome you to Praise Cathedral online service. Listen, our scripture today is coming from the 100th Psalms. Repeat after me. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Listen, our prayer lines are open. If you need prayer, call the prayer line. Someone is waiting right now at the phone to pray with you, to share your concerns and take your concerns to the Lord with you and for you. Today, our message is coming from the elder Mosley Hobson. But before he come, our choir has a song for you. Let's listen to the choir.
praise the Lord, everybody. This is a day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad today that we put all of our trust in God? He is the keeper of our soul. He's the keeper of our faith. He walks with us. He talks with us, and I believe that he continues to pr protect us, even in the midst of everything that's going on. So right there in the midst of your homes, would you just begin clapping your hands and telling the Lord how much you love him, how much you appreciate him, for he woke you up this morning, started you on your way, gave you the blood flowing warmly through your veins, and today we just tell the Lord, Lord, whatever you decide to do, it's all right with me. Our trust is totally in you. Let's look to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we honor you. We bless you for this time, this moment that we share together. Would you bless this word today? Hide me behind the cross. Let no flesh ever glory in your presence. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable unto thy sight, O Lord. You are my strength and my redeemer. And every heart said, Amen. Before we get into the word, we certainly want to pay deference to our leader, the pastor of the Praise Cathedral Church, none other than the Bishop S.E. Iglehart. Bishop, we love you. We appreciate you. And to all of our church, amen, family, we certainly thank God for all of you tuning in. Let me get right to the word today. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 20 will be the word in our hearing today. And if you would pray with me, I promise you that we'll give you what the Lord says and we'll move on about our day. Beginning at the 12th verse, it says this, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place for, to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal from heaven and forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou walk before me as David thy father walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of my kingdom according as I have covenant with David thy father, saying there shall not fail thee a man to be a ruler in Israel. Verse 19 says, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up out uh, by the root. Uh, out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Amen. For the next few moments, I want to talk from the 19th verse and also the 14th verse, one key word, and that word is turn. My question to you is which turn are you making? Which turn are you making? Uh, my eldest daughter recently received her learner's permit now allowing for her to drive a little more frequently with an experienced driver. During this time, it's often the teachers, in this case her parents, uh, hope that we can make it from one place to another without destroying things in between. This one particular day she was driving and I told her where our destination was going to be. As she proceeded to drive and was approaching the turn towards our destination, I said to her, keep straight, don't turn this way. The more I repeated the instructions to keep straight, the more she began to remind me where I said her destination was and the way she knew how to get there. I told her, yes, baby girl, but my plans have changed. I need for you to keep straight. Despite my changes of instruction, she continued to make the turn anyway because she was determined to get to our destination the way she knew to go without regard to the changing instructions from her father, which was the teacher. Isn't that like many of us who are walking with the Lord? Sometimes we'll hear in 
uh, our mind where, uh, where we're here all the time in our mind where the destination is, but oftentimes in our mind because of our own thinking and our human nature, we will decide to make the, the turn and go in the direction that we understand to go. But oftentimes we fail to realize and hear the voice of the Father who is giving us instructions because he sees all things and know all things. We may not understand why he's asked us to go straight or why he's asked us to go another way. We have to be mindful to continue to, to, to follow the instructions of the Father who is our teacher. Uh, but I come to tell you that even though we might make a turn um, against the will of our Father or against the will of our teacher, uh, there is always a way of escape. And so although we turned at the turn that she knew to go, it wasn't until the second time that I told her to turn that she took heed to the instructions. But what was funny was while we were sitting at the light waiting to turn, she continued to tell me that the destination was right in front of her. She continued to tell me the direction that she knew to go in order to get there. That reminds us a lot about ourselves. The Lord is saying to us, listen, I, I know you see, amen, right in front of you where the destination is, but I have a plan for you. You have to learn to follow my instructions. And so as she sat there and continued to tell me, at some point she took her foot off the brake and put it on the gas when the light turned green, of course, and she began to turn according to the instructions of her father. As we look at our own lives, amen, sometimes we are on track for one thing, but then the instructions will change for another reason. But regardless of why they change, we must continue to listen to the instructions from the teacher. Mm. Beloved, we oftentimes look at this scripture, amen, from a collective perspective. We look at it from the standpoint that we at large must turn. This is in fact true. This, in, this particular text addresses a global, amen, people. It makes a cause for a global assessment. But the responsibility still begins with you and I. Self-assessment is not a one-time thing, but it is a continual process that you and I I must always purpose to do within ourselves. For example, as we partake in Holy Communion, 1 Corinthians 11 and 28 says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. We must understand that the self-examination for the believer by the believer is critical. Let me say that again. We must understand that the self-examination for the believer by the believer is critical. There are consequences when we don't assess or examine ourselves as instructed. The consequence for this particular example in 1 Corinthians 11 is he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning or honoring the Lord's body. This failure to self-assess has consequences that is at the responsibility of the believer. So then we find in Philippians 2, 9 and 13, Wherefore, God ha also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess, amen. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but not now much more in my absence, amen. Paul admonishes the church at Philippi, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. And so as we assess, we are putting ourselves in a place that allows for us to see our strengths and our weaknesses. An assessment gives us the ability to determine which way is of God or what is the trick of the enemy. It's the enemy's desire to have uh, us fall away from what God has commanded or required of us. The word tells us in Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a way huh, that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Huh? Therefore, the question to you and I today is, which turn are you making? Huh? In this text, it's important to point out now huh, a person's attitude when following instructions. Huh? Beloved, when the Lord speaks, 
it's imperative that you and I, amen, take a humble stance and, and a reverential position. We must continue with the proud, if we can't, or excuse me, we can't continue with a proud disposition. Help me here. Uh, acting as if God owes you and I something uh, or that I have time because grace covers me. Uh, we have to always put ourselves in a position that when the Lord speaks, uh, it's time for us to humble ourselves. Uh, let me remind you as I get ready to move, amen, through this message, uh, amen, that the word tells us in James 4 and 4, uh, which says, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Uh, however, in James 4 and 6, we see he giveth more grace. Uh, wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, uh, but he gives grace unto the humble. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but when we, when the Lord speaks, it's important for us, uh, amen, to take a position of humility. Uh, because when we find ourselves going low and heeding the instructions of our Father, uh, amen, then and only then will we be able to process what has been said and make the right decision, or in this case, make the right turn. As he calls us, amen, to be humble, amen, he in this text is speaking to the state of the world. God states to Solomon in this particular text, he says, there's many things that are going on, amen, and I'm calling and dedicating this place as my own, amen, but there's still sin in the land. There's still people, amen, that are doing their own thing, and so the state of the world is in trouble, and so he's saying now to us, if there is a remnant of people, huh? the people that are called by my name, if they would do, amen, these things, huh? I will begin to move on their behalf. Huh? And so I came to tell you that he told Solomon, I heard your prayer, huh? and I have chosen this place huh, for myself as a house of sacrifice, huh? because if I shut up the heavens, huh, that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, huh? or if I send pestilence among the people, huh? amen, I'm still God. Huh? So Therefore, if my people huh, who are called by my name huh, shall humble themselves and pray huh, and seek my face and turn, huh, somebody say turn, huh, turn from their wicked ways, huh, then I'm going to move on your behalf. What did he say he would do? He said, I will hear from heaven. Huh, is anybody looking, amen, to turn so that the Lord, amen, can hear from heaven? Huh, amen. He said, I'll forgive their sins. Is anybody looking to turn so that? That, amen, he will forgive your sins. And then he said, I will heal your land. Mm. Is anybody looking to turn so that healing can come in our land? Huh? But I came to tell you, even through the example that I gave with my daughter, huh, that when you fail to follow the instructions, huh, there is always a consequence that comes, uh, amen, with not paying attention to what the Lord says. Huh? Because even though he says, if my people, amen, would turn, huh, I would hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. There comes a consequence for those that will not turn. Because he says later in the 19th verse that if you turn away, forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then, God help me today, will I pluck them up out by the roots out of my land which I have given them and this house. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be plucked out of the hand of the teacher. I don't want to be plucked out of the hand of of the Father, huh? because I want to be in a place where he is. Huh? Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Huh? I heard the songwriter say that the safest place huh, in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Huh? Is there anybody here that is watching and hearing this message, huh? and you've made up in your mind that I'm going to turn. Huh? I'm going to turn in a way because uh, I don't want to be in the line of the consequences that come when I turn away from God's amen instructions huh? because he says if you go and serve other gods and worship them huh? then I will pluck you up out of my land I will pluck you up out of my house and 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 I'll pluck you up out of my sight huh? I don't know about you but I don't want to be plucked huh? God help me today because I didn't been through so much huh? I didn't been through too many dark places huh? I didn't been through too many areas of sinking sand huh? that when the Lord saved me and pulled me up 
out of the muck and the mari clay. Uh, there's no better place I would rather be uh, than to be in the safety of our master. Uh, is there anybody in here today that can say, Lord, I'd rather be in your safety. Uh, I'd rather be in your protection. Uh, I'd rather be under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, and so the question is, which turn are you going to make? Uh, as for me and my house, God help me today. As for me and my house, I'm going to turn uh, in the direction so my God can hear from heaven. Uh, as for me and my house, I'm going to turn uh, in the direction so my God can forgive uh, yours and my sins. Uh, amen. I'm going to turn, uh, amen, in the direction of my God so that he can heal the land. Uh, is there anybody here today, uh, amen, that made up in your mind, God, I want to turn so that I can live for you. Uh, God, I want to turn so that I can be your own. Uh, God, I want to turn so that you can call me your child. Uh, God, I want to turn so that I, you can keep me, amen, in the safety of your arms. Uh, and so I came to tell somebody today that it's important for you to make the right turn. Uh, and maybe you're watching today and you did what my daughter did. Uh, she went ahead and turned the way she knew to turn. Uh, there is always still a way of escape uh, because there is a way that seemeth right unto man. Uh, but the end thereof is death. Uh, but I got a feeling uh, that when you learn to make the right turn uh, and make the right decision, uh, amen, he'll give you everlasting life. Uh, well, how can you assure that, preacher? Because John 3 and 16 said, uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You can still make that turn. You can still make the turn towards uh, the way of holiness. You can still make the turn towards the way of righteousness. You can still make the turn, amen, towards uh, our Father which is in heaven. Uh, we find ourselves even like the prodigal son who woke up and saw himself in the mess that he was in. Uh, he found out that it was better for him to be in his father's house than it was for him to be in the midst of this mess. Uh, I came to tell you that maybe you're like the prodigal son. You find yourself in the midst of mess. Uh, there is better for you in your father's house. Uh, get up from where you are and make the turn towards uh, the master. Uh, get up from where you are and make the turn towards our Savior. Amen. As we saw with the prodigal son, amen, I see the Lord standing with his arms wide open, ready to receive you into his arms. The question is, which turn are you making? The best turn you can make today is to give your life unto the Lord. The best turn that you can make today is to seek him while he may be found. Perhaps you're watching today and you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. Or you're watching today and you're a backslider and you said, I want to come, amen, back into the fold. Would you pray this prayer with me? Uh, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross, were buried, and on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. And we all say it together, amen. Remember to continue to making the right turn towards our Father, which is in heaven. God bless you is my prayer. Amen. What a mighty word. Which way will you turn? Will you turn and follow the teaching of the Lord? Amen. If you pray that prayer with Elva Hobson, we want to hear from you. Amen. Call the prayer line at 210-223-5263 and let us know what the Lord has done for you. Amen. If you would like to support this ministry, you can do so through Cash App and Givelify. Please follow the instructions that you see on the screen. Thank you for joining us today. We will see you next week at the same time. Remember, if you need prayer, call the prayer line. Someone is waiting right now to pray with you. Amen. Please receive the benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Be blessed.